Eric here with Master Tool Repair once again. Uh, today we're going to go over a video on how to replace a ball stitch valve plate assembly retro kit. All right, this is a valve plate service kit comprehensive installation video for the model ball stitch CAP 60P OF model as well as on the Husky H1506F model type 2. This is only used on the Husky H1506 uh, type 2 model that's used after. It was made after May of 2008. So if you look at your serial number and you see that it's made after 2008, then you have the Type 2 model. And in your kit for this part number AB-9429999, this is the kit number, you'll have an insert. This is with your parts breakdown. And here's a Type 1 model made before May of 2008. You can see that and yours may be like this. You may have a single valve plate style, which has a three-fingered valve as well as a clover leaf little reed valve on the top of the piston. This is type 1. So you're replacing this older style with your newer retro kit that's used on the type 2 models after May 2008. And that's for the Husky. For the Boss Stitch Cap 60P-OF, they all use this particular style. So it's a two-piece valve plate with valves sandwiched in between and two gaskets on either side. So your valves are inside sandwiched in between the two plates and they're already installed. Everything comes nice and neat as one whole uh, assembly, and I'm going to show that to you now. So we're going to install this for you. Here we go. In your AB9429999 valve plate assembly and valve head assembly, rather retro kit, you'll get you'll get it like this. It's wire tied, and you have the head, you have the valve plate assembly with gaskets and valves, and of course your cylinder gasket. So here's your little air intake filter. This denotes, of course, the intake side of the head. And the intake side matches up with the two small holes on the valve plate. So that's how you know it's your intake side, and the two small cutouts. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like. And the kit also includes a new piston top and a piston screw. So you'll get this in the kit, and you want to use these parts. So use all the parts in the kit. All right, this is a little torque screw, uh, piston, screw as well as a brand new pistons top and these this is for the new styles so we're going to install that as well and since we'll be in the compressor repairing and replacing the valve plate assembly i'm also going to show you how to replace the cylinder barrel and the piston ring or compression ring as well uh, these are two separate parts so they, these do not come in the valve plate kit but for the sake of the video we're going to go ahead and show you and uh, this is a very very common part to replace really on any oil free unit but also on uh, this particular compressor. If you don't have, have low compression, uh, a lot of times it's because of this valve plate, the older single style valve plate uh, is defective, but also look at your piston ring. Because if it's torn or cracked, dry rot, it nicked around the outer edge and does not provide a good seal within the cylinder wall, you will not get much compression, if any. So definitely look at this, and I, we recommend replacing these parts anyway with the valve plate. So you, you know, you're 100%. So it's like uh, having a brand new compressor at that point. All right, and these are the tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need uh, some various bits. You're gonna need to remove the shroud. That means you're gonna need a, a Phillips head screwdriver, Phillips head bit, uh, some wire cutter cell to remove the uh, wire ties on the valve plate and head assembly. You're gonna need a hex allen wrench and, uh, or bit. And this is, a, I believe, a size 7 16 So you're gonna need this as well. and Let's see, and also a socket, a 3 8 inch socket. And I'll show you now where those uh, bolts are to remove. All right, so we're gonna, I've already loosened many of these, so these are Phillips head on top of the handle. We're gonna take these two Phillips head screws out, right? Set them aside. You'll remove the top portion of the handle. And of course, on the sides of the shroud, you'll notice, uh, of course, four Phillips head screws. I've already removed these two. I'm going to remove the last two Phillips head screws holding on the bottom of the shroud. So you have two, four, six Phillips head screws that are holding on the shroud. Up here, you'll see uh, lock nuts, nylon lock nuts, all right? That's where we'll need our 3 8 inch socket. And I would recommend putting it on an extension. Uh, it's kind of hard to get in there without an extension. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our 3 8 inch socket on our extension and remove these now. There's one.
you know what, that is actually a different size right there. So that is a generic screw that's in this particular side, so we're going to have to remove that. So I'll need a different screwdriver. Alright, now we have the nylon nut removed. And you don't have to remove this bolt here. This is a 10 millimeter bolt that is uh, holding the top handle on, but you do not have to remove this. All right, so once you have all of the Phillips head screws out on the end here and two on each side of the shroud and the one three inch nylon nut here, you can simply remove the shroud. All right, so it should come off very easily. There you go, there's a stud. That's the only thing that's really holding on the shroud after you remove the Phillips head screws. Set this aside. This is your motor pump assembly. There we are, and here you have your head. We have your old valve plate underneath, and we have some hex screws here. So we're going to go ahead and remove those with a 7/16 inch uh, hex bit, Allen wrench, or a hex bit. And of course, uh, it goes without saying, but just to be safe, uh, make sure to drain the tanks first. Okay, drain the tank. Um, unplug the unit, turn it off. All right, you don't want something to happen. Uh, if you get a blast of air in the face, that could be bad news. Um, and here you have a compression fitting on the discharge tube, so we're also going to remove that. All right, that's going to require a crescent wrench. Let's, well, let's first go ahead and remove the head bolts. And you'll notice there are nuts in the bottom of the casting. All right, so get, I would take a wrench and uh, certainly hold those nuts on. You know, hold those nuts in place while you unscrew each bolt. All right, let's take off the second here. And I believe the nuts are only on this side, on the discharge side of the head. So you only have to worry about two of these little nuts here. All right, and lastly, okay. All right, and I would just get an adjustable uh, crescent here and just loosen that up. Actually, just tightening it. Want to loosen that up and remove the discharge tube. All right, so great. We have the discharge line loose, and we have all of our head bolts off. All right, so we're going to lift it off as one piece. There we are. And we're going to need to, of course, reuse this compression adapter. That's what your transfer tube of course we'll fasten to and this is the discharge on the new pump so we have to reuse that fitting so we're going to remove that as well all right we're going to take our head bolts out because of course we will reuse the head bolts and set this aside so this is your old style valve plate as somebody you'll notice when you get into it so a single valve plate and you have a three fingered valve this is a problem here it's very obvious one of those little fingers flappers is completely broken so that is your problem, and that's probably what you'll find to be the case. All right, so that calls for a new valve plate assembly. So we're gonna set that aside. All right, and on top here, you'll see your old style inlet valve. So this is a cloverleaf inlet valve here with the torque screw, and that is the uh, old style, um, style one, or type one if you have a Husky unit. Um, but that's what we're replacing. So we'll have a new piston top here, which will replace that completely, this solid. All right, so we could take our Torx uh, bit here, and we're gonna remove this, and this should be a T20 size Torx bit, I believe. Actually, well, it's a size up. T25, it looks like. We have a T25 bit here. And this may be very difficult to remove and you might might need a driver I know, by hand it's pretty difficult to remove so this did not work by hand all right this uh, piston screw is is in there really well and a lot of times there's thread sealant on the thread so that's why it's so difficult to remove all right I have a little impact here right this is a little quarter inch impact gun uh, cordless and that impacting uh, action should loosen it so here we go Look at that. So just needed a little more force, needed that impact to remove it, and that did the trick.
All right, and if you don't have to worry about this being damaged, we're replacing it. So if you destroy it, not a problem whatsoever. All right, and once you have that removed, you'll see the old cylinder gasket on top of the base of the pump. All right, this is gonna be adhered to it like it is right now. That is not coming off by hand, so we're gonna take a scraper. Make sure you get a flat, broad scraper like this to remove the cylinder gasket, all right? Now this should come right off without much effort. As you see, we have a new one, so it doesn't matter that we're destroying this. All right, let's remove the last little bit. And you wanna make sure you have, take fine grade sandpaper, you wanna sand the rest of the gasket material off of the base. Uh, certainly recommend to do that when replacing the gasket. So fine grade sandpaper or some emery cloth should do it. And you'll see the old cylinder, all right? We're gonna just lift this up, lift this out from the base, like so. And now to remove the old piston top and the inlet valve and the old compression ring, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just take a flathead screwdriver, all right, and kind of wedge it underneath of the piston ring in between the cylinder top of the uh, connecting rod and the piston top, all right? I've already done this, but you'll simply take a little rubber mallet or hammer and smack it so it dislodges the piston top and the compression ring. All right, so we're gonna slide this right out. There you go. All right, and we also have a filter in here. This is the old style little uh, mesh filter. So you're gonna remove that. We have no use for that any longer because we have our new intake filter on the new valve plate assembly. All right, so make sure all that material is out. Good idea to take a little blow gun if you have one and just kind of blow the excess material out and dust. All right, there we go. Now we can install our new cylinder barrel and our new compression ring. But I realized that when I removed the old piston top, uh, the torque screw from the piston top, well, it sheared it, it sheared it right off. It was the only way we could remove this was to put some uh, pressure on it and use an impact to so use that hammer kind of action, but guess what? It snapped it off into threads. So that's going to happen. This is pretty common. That very well may happen when you remove the piston top torque screw. All right, but don't fret. Here's what we can do. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace this rod. And now the rod, very inexpensive. Um, you know, you very well may have to do this. There's really no easy way to remove that screw from the rod. So it's a very inexpensive part and we're gonna go ahead and replace it. So we have a four millimeter hex uh, wrench here, or hex fitting, Allen wrench. And this is, by the way, a left-hand thread. You'll notice that as you try to <laughs> loosen it up. All right, so it is a left-hand thread, so you're gonna turn clockwise to remove it. Four millimeter Allen wrench we have here. And this has a washer, keep that handy. All right, let's remove the fan, this little squirrel cage cooling fan. And that just pulls right off. There's one of our lock nuts that fell down. Okay, and here's the rod. It's the A610101 rod. All right, yeah, our part number is AB-610101. And you find that on the parts list on our website. And we're gonna remove this rod and it may not come off very easily by hand may not be able to pull it off the bearing because it's recessed on the other side and, and the, it goes around the bearing, all right? So you might have to take a couple flathead screwdrivers to remove this. We're gonna try that first and see if we can kind of pry it off here. All right, let's see if we can go here one side at a time. Here we go. All right, so we have our two screwdrivers. Let's go ahead and see if we can get enough leverage to be able to just kind of shimmy this off of the bearing. And if you don't, well then we go to the next option. If you don't have enough let's see leverage, can't get in there to remove it, we'll go to option number two and there's always another plan. So I use a wide blade screwdriver, a large flathead and simply shimmied it off the connecting rod off the bearing on either side. It's a little tedious, but you don't need any special tools. This is definitely the way to go, all right? But you'll take the screwdriver and kind of insert it in between, you know, the eccentric crankshaft here 
and the connecting rod. All right, so I just simply turned it, you got some leverage, went side to side and kind of turned the blade and pried the rod off the bearing. All right, so once you do that a few times, it'll come right off of the bearing. Voila, there you go. It takes a little bit of time and it might be a little tedious, but it will come off. All right, so we have our new connecting rod, the AB6010101. All right, so we're gonna take this and install it onto the old bearing. And this sh should be a press on. Actually, well, while I'm at it, let me go ahead and insert it, pull it through the cylinder, you know, the base of the pump, that might help. Some of these things are trial and error. So to install this a little bit more evenly, uh, like I was doing just a second ago, we're gonna take an inch and a sixteenth, that's one and one sixteenth inch uh, socket here. That way we can insert it on the perimeter of the connecting rod. In the bottom there, see, it's the same size. That way it'll press on evenly. So I'd recommend that, inch and a sixteenth socket. So we're just gonna set it right there in the center and let's tap it. All right, so now that the connecting rod is pressed onto the bearing, we're gonna drop in our new cylinder from the top of the base here, right? So make sure your connecting rod is centered and we're gonna drop it right in. See, look at that, nice and flush, very easy. All right, now you can probably tell here, the connecting rod is at the top of its stroke. That's important, make sure it's not at the bottom of its stroke here. So rotate it where the connecting rod is at the top of the stroke. All right, our base is nice and clean and free of debris. All right, we have our new compression ring and you install it with the convex up. So you'll say with the walls kind of pointing up or facing up, you'll see that bevel there. So that's how you're gonna to wanna to install it. This is wrong and that is correct. All right, set that there. Kinda of drop that new piston Top in, let's hand start the torque screw. Don't put a driver on it right away. So hand start that. And we're gonna take our drill driver. Let's go ahead and attach our Phillips head. Or I'm sorry, that's your Torx bit right there. So we're gonna attach the Torx bit. That's the T20 size. And tighten that down. Right. Make sure it's centered. I want to make sure that it's certainly centered as much as you possibly can so that that uh, piston ring, the compression ring, forms evenly. All right, now once we turn the crankshaft, see, we'll see that the compression ring is installed correctly and it is moving up and down as it should in the cylinder. So we have a nice, uh, let's see, nice compression in there, no gap whatsoever. And you wanna to look to make sure that the perimeter and outer edge of the compression ring is not damaged when you install it. it Before you install the new valve plate assembly, we're gonna remove the discharge adapter from the old head, which the transfer or discharge tube attaches to, all right? so. Just throw it in the vise, but do not press it very firmly because if you do, this aluminum is gonna crack and it'll crack the fins. All right, let's throw an adjustable crescent wrench in there and loosen it up like so. All right, now that we have the discharge adapter out of the old head, we're gonna install our new valve plate and head assembly. All right, so remove the wire ties. Wire clippers here. And once you have these removed, make sure to keep this assembly like it is in order. And try not to take off the valve plate assembly, try not to uh, see remove it. You know, the gaskets, you know, keep the assembly like this so you know exactly in what order everything goes in. So it'll come like this, make it easy for you. So just hold both ends of it so it is together. All right, 
And this is the inlet filter, so it's going to go on the inlet side, and you can tell because of the small holes right below the inlet. All right, now our discharge tube is on this side, as you're looking at it on the left side. So we know discharge hold and discharge port is right there on this side of the head, so it's going to face the discharge tube. That's how you know which way to install it. All right, we're going to get our head bolts started here. Start by hand. Always thread them by hand first, so as to make sure you don't cross thread. It's easier to honestly just remove the whole assembly and start it like this, so you know everything is in place and nothing dislodged. So, all right. Now that we have all of the head bolts through the valve plate assembly and head assembly, so everything is in order, we'll install it on top of the base. Here we have our outlet coming straight out. This is where your outlet adapter is going to install. First, we're going to go ahead and tighten up these head bolts. All right, so now when you install the lock nuts, okay, for these back two head bolts, uh, it's, it's really difficult to kind of get in there. You'll see you have to install the lock nut here in a little slot. So you can't install it this way. You have to kind of drop it down in this little groove here because this perfect little groove that will uh, that it will fit in all right so you got to drop it down there make sure it stays in as you tighten the head bolt so you got to drop the lock nut in from this angle all right so we're gonna do that on the other side kind of just drop it in there's no easy clean way to do this you know you just got to kind of drop it in and, and kind of finagle it into the little slot that it fits into so now we have the nuts in place. I hand started them so they're basically tight. We're just going to take the impact and tighten bolts up all the way. Again, we're going to go in a crisscross pattern here so that they tighten down evenly. There's no torque specification, so just tight enough. There we go. Actually, you know what? We're going to hold that nut there. As you see, the nut is rotating, so we want to take our adjustable wrench here and we just want to hold that nut in place while we tighten it. Let's see if we can yeah, fit it in there. There we go. So hold that nut down and then tighten. There we go. So just tight enough. All right. Second nut here. And last layer in a corner. All right, excellent. All right, so head valve plate assembly is on. Our new piston ring, our new piston top and connecting rod. As you see, it rotates easily. All right, so now we're gonna attach the Teflon tape, plumber's tape to the outlet discharge adapter. All right, so any kind of fittings where air will pass through, you certainly want to attach some Teflon thread. All right, so let's do that. Not on the compression thread where the tube attaches to it, but the male thread that threads into the head itself. All right, just give it a couple good wraps of Teflon tape to seal that thread so you don't have any leaks. And notice one big part missing here, the fan. Now let's not forget the cooling fan on the pump. All right, now this is slotted. You see the shape of this. The shaft here is slotted, uh, same shape and the fan itself. So let's go ahead and press that on first. There we are. And this is our, I believe, 7 16 inch hex fitting here, or Allen wrench. And this is the left hand screw. So don't forget that like I just did. All right, so we're gonna, you're gonna loosen it up to tighten it because it is left handed. All right, and just hand tight is, and that's all that's necessary, not too tight. But hold that in place and tighten just enough. There we go. All right, there we are. So, all right, so now we're gonna install the uh, outlet adapter, or discharge adapter into the new head. It's wrapped in Teflon tape. All right, take your adjustable wrench and Bring it around one more revolution. Doesn't it be, need to be extraordinarily tight. 
just tight enough. You don't want to crank it out too hard because it'll destroy the head and it might very well crack the casting of the head. So that should be good. All right, take our discharge tube and compression nut. There we go. All right, and see it has to line up. So it means we have to rotate the discharge adapter a little bit more so it lines up. That looks good to me. Okay, and kind of press it against it so that the compression nut is kind of flush there. So you insert part of the compression nut, or ferrule rather, the compression sleeve. All right, just kind of press the tube towards the head and start to hand tighten the compression nut. There we go. Take it the rest of the way here. There we are, and let's make sure to tighten the compression nut in the tank side on the check valve, because that was a little loose. There we go. Excellent. All right, so our discharge tube is attached to the new valve plate head assembly. Now we can install the shroud. All right, so this is the stud, the main stud that holds the shroud on. So we're gonna kind of line this up best we can. And this could be, take a couple times here to line it up perfectly. And looks like, there it is. All right, so the stud is coming through the top of the shroud that we can attach our nylon nut All right, so now that we have the stud through the shroud and the handle, we're gonna go ahead and install our nylon nut. And this again is the 3 8 inch nylon nut. So take your bit here and just start it by hand first, as we don't wanna cross thread it. All right, there we are, got it started. Now we can throw the bit in the driver and tighten it down all the way. There we are. And now it's just a matter of your four or five uh, Allen, I'm sorry, five Phillips head screws. And that's easy as pie. So we're just going to tighten up the shroud here. Yeah, two on each side. And that way to keep that shroud on nice and tight and keep it from bribery. All right, I hand threaded and started these uh, Phillips head screws for the shroud. So we're just gonna finish them with the driver. That side is in securely. Our other side here. This will keep the shroud down and also keep it from being so noisy. Less vibration equals less noise. All right, and our last little screw here on the end. And all we're left with is the top handle. All right, so we're gonna Install this. Actually, let's see if uh, make sure it goes the right way here. It can only go one way. You'll see that. There we are. Okay, just drop down the Phillips head screws and tighten. And here we are at the finish line. One more Phillips head screw. Make sure to start it slowly. There you go. Compressor has 100% compression now. Brand new piston ring and cylinder connecting rod. And we have, of course, a new valve plate head assembly. That is a new retro kit that will put this baby back in business. So that is how you install a AB9429999 valve plate assembly. Um, you know, we do have uh, this information online. Uh, we have our, check out our YouTube channel for other uh, videos. And if you have any requests, let us know, email us, and we'll try to get them up there. But, there you go. Thanks once again for watching and happy compressing.